everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maggie. I am all bundled up. It is the first kind of cold snap we've had. Where I live, I live in northern Minnesota and it's been unseasonably warm. So it's the first like, yeah, full week of like below zero. So I'm bundled up a little bit. My desk area is surrounded by windows. So it's a little drafty, but Today I want to share kind of my reflections of 2023. So I did 23 things in 2023. It was a list of things that I wanted to do. Some of them were big goals. Some of them were little things. Some of them were hobby, work, finance related. It was kind of a big mix. And I really enjoyed making that list and that kind of process because it made me think kind of outside the box. I feel like, you know, there are some um, goals that maybe you just set every year for yourself, but this one helped me kind of explore some other areas. So I am doing something similar this year. If you missed it, I will link up in the cards my 20 goals for 2024. I don't think I'm going to keep up with the, you know, 24 and 24, 25 and 25, because then it just gets a little bit out of hand after a while. So we're doing 20 things this year. Um, and I shared that already. So if you want to see what I'm up to this year, but I want to talk about last year. So in the back of my planner, I have this chart that I made with all the goals and I have like boxes I could color in with the progress and all that good stuff. And this was really kind of a fun thing for me to update. So what I would do is track, you know, certain things throughout the month and then each month come in and update, you know, the boxes and all that fun stuff. So I'm, I'm going to kind of scoot to the side. I did post on Instagram when I started this and I'll be posting this you know, series of posts with the things that I achieved and things that I did not achieve here soon to kind of um, be the companion to this video. But yeah, let's go ahead and begin. So the first goal was to travel outside of the state six times. I did in fact um, achieve that. So some of the places that we went, went to Portland, went to Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and went to Chicago, went to Wisconsin again, <laughs> um, I went to Iowa, Dublin, um, Georgia, Grand Cayman. Like I really got to go to a lot of places. Some of it was for work. Some of it was, um, I went to Eau Claire, Wisconsin for a surgery. Um, some of it was to visit family. It was just a really well-rounded travel year for us. So I'm really, really pleased with that. I have a similar goal for this year. And number two was to try three new foods. So I thought this was a really fun goal. Um, nothing, you know, too serious. It was a little bit more lighthearted, but it also kind of challenged me um, when we would eat out at restaurants, particularly to try something off the menu that I haven't had before, either like a specific ingredient or a whole meal. Um, so two of them I actually checked off at one dinner party we threw with friends. We did a German themed um, dinner party. We had like hats and flags and all the food. It was super fun. Um, and I had never had sauerbraten or um, spatzel. I think I'm saying those right before. So I had both of those at this dinner party and that was awesome. And then the third one is super random, but this um, restaurant in our, you know, hometown kind of does a seasonal ice cream and they did a sweet corn ice cream when it was harvest time. And low-key, it was so good. <laughs> I know it sounds really gross, but like it was kind of salty with the creamy. I mean, I wouldn't eat like a whole bowl of it, but I had a couple of bites and it was pretty good. So those are my three things. I'm definitely doing that again this year. I just think it's fun to kind of expand and try different things. Okay, number three was to watercolor 30 pages. I failed at this. I did not watercolor any pages. Um, this is something I really do want to do. I have all of the supplies for it. I kind of like tried to watercolor a little bit as an activity during the pandemic when I couldn't go anywhere um, or do anything, but I haven't really touched it since. So that is why it's on the list because I wanted to, you know, bring it outside and just have an activity, but I didn't prioritize it. So unfortunately, I did not achieve that one. Number four was to read two books. I know some of you are super readers and read all these books. I'm just not a reader. I don't particularly enjoy reading. It's kind of a struggle for me, um, but I did read two books this year. So one of them, actually I read a third book. I should mark it down. Um, one of them was I'm Glad My Mom Died. Um, and this was really interesting. I really enjoyed the book. Definitely look up the trigger warnings. There are some very sensitive topics discussed in the book, but I found it very interesting and I'm glad I read it. Um, the other book I read is The House Across the Lake. This one I actually, about halfway through, 
to the end, I flew through it. Like I could not put it down. It was kind of like a thriller. I didn't know what was coming next or all these twists and turns. So I do want to maybe read um, this year a book or two from the same author because I really enjoyed just not know. Like I thought I knew how the story was going to end and I totally didn't. So that was fun for me. Um, I have really never had that experience with reading before. So maybe that's just something I can explore this year. And then I read a third book for work. I actually did the audiobook, So I'm going to count it though. It was Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. It's definitely dated and it's, um, I don't know, not really applicable to my role, but I read it because it was the assignment. So um, yeah, I did the audiobook of that. It was fine. I wouldn't, I don't know. It just doesn't pertain to my particular job. So whatever. Um, okay. And then number five was to treat myself to three self-care appointments. I went above and beyond here. I achieved five. So I got my hair done in May. I had it colored um, like with highlights and cut. June, we had a couple's massage. And then in November, I got my hair trimmed again. And then in December, I had a facial and a pedicure uh, before our trip. So that was really, really nice. And that was something that, um, it's just something that I never really prioritized before. I felt like bad spending money on those types of appointments. So now I have some different systems in place with my savings challenges so that I can enjoy those appointments this year with money I've already saved up and ready to go. Number six was to pass my CIPP US certification. I did sit for the exam and I missed passing by one point. So that was incredibly frustrating. And then there was a third, there's like a 30 day delay before you can take the exam again. And then life happened. And then our company took like a big shift in the like, marketplace that we are targeting. So it just no longer became like the number one priority. Other things came up. Um, but I'm glad I studied for it. I definitely learned more about the privacy industry. I do work in the privacy industry. So that was good. I just didn't actually get the letters behind my name, but that's fine with me. Okay. Number seven was to work with 15 clients. I did in fact hit this. Um, I don't have a ton of control over what's assigned to me and my involvement. Um, but I was happy that I hit the 15 mark and I really just have that goal to make sure that I'm expanding my horizons and taking lessons learned from each client um, and kind of putting it back into my skill set and just growing from that. Okay, number eight was to earn a promotion. I was promoted in April to a more senior role in my company. So that felt really good. I, it was something that I was working towards. And then yeah, in April with kind of like my annual, you know, review and all that I did earn the promotion. So that was great. Number nine was to give more than I did in 2022. So I do keep track of the um, monetary value of what I gave like with different donations and organizations. Um, I didn't really keep track of like clothing donations and household you know, that it bring to the center. But I do know that I gave more this year than I did in previous years. So that felt really good. Um, and that's something that I'm working to increase even more this year. So check out my, my 2024 video to hear me talk about that. But um, yeah, I've just really wanted to put more emphasis on giving back. And it also just makes me feel like fulfilled and happy inside being able to give to those that that need it. Um, this year, particularly, we were able to help an individual leave she was leaving a domestic um, violence situation and kind of restarting her life. She had secured housing, but really like, you know, was finding a job and all that. So we were able, um, my fiance and I, we spent a couple hundred dollars at Target and Walmart and like decked her out. We got her, you know, sheets and towels and all of the like basic cookware and like really wanted to make sure that she had a, I don't know, like a little bit of a head start and that felt so good and to like see her thrive now is really really rewarding so that's something that we are both my fiance and I putting more emphasis into um and especially trying to find local things that we can give back to that means a lot because we can see kind of how that enriches our community Number 10 was to donate blood again. Um, I did not do that this year. After my surgery, I had to wait a while and I just honestly kind of forgot about it. Um, so that's something I would like to do again. Um, I have O negative blood type, which is a universal blood type. So if you're in a car accident or have some sort of like trauma thing happen and you need blood, they start you on an O negative until they figure out what your actual blood type is, if you're A or B or AB and all that good stuff. Um, so because I I am privileged to have O negative. I feel like it's important to donate blood. Um, my barrier is that I just don't have any donation centers near me. So this is something I need to like schedule and prioritize when I'm in the city to make sure I can do it and, you know, 
get back. So moving along, I kind of mentioned surgery. Number 11 was to have the surgery that I've been putting off. Um, I did in fact have that in February. Um, I suffered from pilonidal disease for seven or eight years. I had flare-ups about every nine months and it is excruciating pain. It's like right on your tailbone, the bottom of your spine. And when you have a flare up, it's just, it's like this big cyst. And so it's very tender. Everything hurts. You can't sit, you can't stand, you can't lay, like nothing feels good. Um, and so I have been kind of treating it as it was flaring up, but ultimately you really do need to have surgery to resolve the root problem. Um, so I went to Dr. Immerman in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, um, specifically because he has dedicated his life towards people that have this disease. Um, I was really disappointed with how my healthcare providers over the years had been treating it. They were like, oh, it's just routine. But then when you go onto these forums, you hear about all these horror stories of people needing like multiple revision surgeries to actually fix it. And like, anyway, so I, I honestly put the surgery off for years because I was so worried about not healing properly or not having the surgeon actually know enough because it is a little bit more nuanced, I think, than what people maybe give it credit for. So I found Dr. Immerman um, and he's fantastic. If you suffer from that, um, I would be happy to chat with you about my experience because it was phenomenal. I'm so happy I did it. Um, best thing I could have done for myself all year, hands down. And um, I'm really grateful to not have to deal with that problem any further you know, in my life. So yeah, that was probably a highlight of my year for sure. Um, okay, next one, be 15 pounds lighter at the end of the year. I am 12 and a half pounds lighter than I was at the beginning of last year. Uh, so didn't quite hit the 15, but I'm really happy with, um, you know, the 12 and a half pounds. I mean, like during the summer, I was a little bit lower and then I, I gained a little bit back in the, the winter, you know, kind of put a little bit of extra on, but I'm really happy with that. Um, and most of that was just kind of changing a few lifestyle habits, walking a little bit more, um, and making some dietary changes changes, but it wasn't anything major. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, okay. Next is 13, uh, schedule and keep appointments. I had a very bad habit of like canceling appointments and then never rescheduling them. And I'm happy to say I did not cancel or reschedule any appointments this year. Um, so I took Miko to the vet, my hair appointments, like all of those I kept, um, I also had my birth control changed. I use um, Nexplanon on my arm, so I had that done. Um, I had my eye doctor exam. I had surgery and like post-op and pre-op and all that good stuff. So very, very pleased with kind of like growing up and adulting and keeping appointments, <laughs> even though I'm not always excited to go to the doctor. Um, okay, number 14, complete 100 workouts. So to be honest, I did not track this as well as I should have. I think I hit 100, but what I actually tracked in my planner was 90. So I'm going to say I didn't complete this because I didn't actually like track it, but you know, I may have, I just don't know. I wasn't, yeah, like midsummer, I just wasn't the best at tracking things. Um, but even so 90 workouts is fantastic. It's better than zero workouts. So we are happy with that. Um, number 15, walk outside 50 times. I did in fact achieve this because I was really good about tracking like my walks. I count a walk as a workout. Um, but yeah, I was really good about this. I walked outside a ton in the summer, of course, and just getting the fresh air and like hearing nature. And um, yeah, it's fantastic. And now as I'm filming this and it's snowing outside, I still am trying to get outside a little bit and go for a walk here and there as it's safe, as long as it's not icy. Um, because I think it's just really good for my brain. I work from home. I'm like in my house all the time. <laughs> so it's really good for me. And to get some of the, you know, enrichment outside of my home. Um, um, so yeah, I'm very happy I walked outside 50 times. Um, okay, 16, track alcohol consumption. So um, two years ago, I kind of made a rule for myself that on weeknights, so if I had to work the next morning, I would not have more than two drinks a night. Um, not that I had two drinks every night, but it was like if I want to go out or something or like it was someone's birthday, I could go and have two, but I didn't want to go past that number two. And that was really, really good for me. Um, this year, I didn't set as kind of strict of goals, but I wanted to kind of track it 
So ultimately, uh, my fiance and I have decided to stop drinking. Um, so I am two and a half months sober, which feels fantastic. I was kind of sober curious for a while. Um, but yeah, we kind of made the jump in November and haven't looked back since, at least so far. I don't really know what everything will look like in the future. But um, that's something that, yeah, I just feel like it wasn't... I don't know, it was time for a break. I wanted to explore, you know, we did like no drink November as kind of a little bit of a challenge. And then we decided like, wow, we're both sleeping better. Um, for me personally, um, my mental health improved a lot. I wasn't in such a dark place and, and wasn't having as many like intrusive thoughts. Uh, so that was great. And overall, we just feel a lot better. So we decided like, let's just keep going and we'll see where this brings us. So yeah, I think, you know, if you are sober curious, the first thing that you could do is kind of just track your, you know, alcohol consumption and you may start to see some patterns. Like I realized that on weekends that I would go out and like binge drink, um, like on a Friday or a Saturday, the next day, my anxiety levels were a lot higher. And like, I just was feeling a lot more down on myself. So, you know, it's something to look into. Um, but yeah, I can't, I can't say how happy I am. I'm, I've really enjoyed our sobriety and it has been a little bit of a lifestyle change, but it's been really positive for us. Number 17, bring fewer things into my home. I'm going to say I succeeded at this. I definitely um, was a lot more mindful with the purchases. I did not track everything as much as I did in years past, but um, we also were just like, I don't know, kind of downsizing um, we got rid of a lot of things from our home and we also have decided to like kind of, I don't know, take it a little bit easier on gifts, like for Christmas and birthdays. Like we, we get each other a gift, my fiance and I, but it's like one special thing instead of like, and here's like five little things. So that has definitely been more meaningful and also decreases the amount of clutter in our home. And I've also been trying to put a little bit more focus on like reusing what's already in my home or like using it in a different way. So like any cute like decorative boxes that come, you know, as like the package of something I'm reusing for organization and just trying to like minimize the shopping a little bit. Um, so I would say I succeeded at this. I didn't like specifically track it. But I feel overall my gut says, yeah, you you have less things in your home than you did last year. So now we have a couple of financial goals. The first one is to achieve 250000 net worth. I'm really close. I did not hit this. Um, there are a lot of factors that go into net worth, you know, like money in the market. You can't control the stocks. Um, the other thing for us is we are getting married in the summer of 2024. So we have been like spending our savings for wedding stuff, um, which is what you do. You know, it was great to have the money saved and I've been putting more money into savings, but like overall, I'm also spending it on like our dress and our photographer and like all of the other things. So, um, yeah, I'm happy with that year over year though. My net worth is up 22%. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, and you know, it's just kind of an arbitrary goal that you reach for in a number, but I do think it's a pretty cool milestone to hit. Number 19, increase my 401k contributions. So I did this in April when I got my promotion and raise and all that. I immediately put more into my 401k, which felt really good. Um, my company also started doing a match this year. We didn't match before. So it's been really fun to see like not only my extra contributions, but then like what they're contributing really grow. Um, and I feel like I'm on track with retirement now. I wanted to complete my tax year 2022 Roth IRA. I did complete that on March 1st. So that's great. Um, that was the first year I maxed out my Roth IRA. My Roth IRA now isn't really as much of a focus because I do have a Roth 401k. I'm actually able to put more into my Roth 401k than I can my Roth IRA. So I put a little bit into my Roth IRA, but it's not really a primary focus. And then after we get married, our household income will be over the limit. So we'll just kind of decide if we want to do a backdoor Roth IRA or if we want to like just prioritize other things. But um, I was really happy that I did max it out at least once in my lifetime. Um, and that felt so good to see the like thing being like, congrats, you did it. Or, like the app had a little thing pop up and it was just, it was sweet. Um, okay, 21, contribute 15% of my gross salary towards retirement. I did, in fact, achieve this and exceed this. So in my monthly recap videos, well, I kind of stopped doing a monthly, but they're back. Um, I do track that progress. I was more so at like 18% gross income, so that felt really, really good. 
Um, I wanted my expenses to be at 65% or less. I'm really pleased to share that they were at, they were 55% less, which is awesome. I do have a financial recap video coming soon for like my 2023 finances. If that is something of interest to you. And then the last one is to save $3,000 for a future goal, which turned into towards my wedding. Um, and I did achieve that. And then some, um, we are still saving and all of that for the wedding. One of our big goals is to have a debt-free wedding. Um, we don't want to start our marriage off with brand new debt from, you know, being over the top or anything like that. So I'm really pleased with how this year went. I didn't achieve every goal, but overall, I'm really, really happy with it. So I completed 17 out of 23 goals, which would be 74%. I'm looking at my cheat sheet. Um, and I didn't complete six out of the 23, which is 26%. So I'm happy with that. I mean, almost 75% completed. That's really good. I didn't expect to complete everything. I knew that there would be things that just you know, my priorities changed or whatever, but I'm really pleased with it. So I'm excited to see what 2024 brings. And yeah, let's go ahead and have a great year. Let me know in the comment section how your goals went for 2023. Definitely let me know what you were working towards in 2024. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.